Tonight I ordered a targeted military strike on the airfield in Syria from where the chemical attack was launched. President Donald Trump late last night announcing the U.S. missile strike in Syria. Pentagon officials said two U.S. warships in the eastern Mediterranean launched as many as 59 Tomahawk cruise missiles right at a Syrian military airbase. The same airbase, they say, that housed the warplanes that carried out that gruesome chemical attack just days ago. Now, that U.S. operation comes just two days since the Syrian military dropped the poisonous nerve gas on a rebel-held town in northern Syria. It killed 86 people and injured countless civilians, including children. In announcing the attack last night, President Trump said the time had come for the United States and its allies to stop Syrian President Bashar al-Assad's forces. The region continues to destabilize, threatening the United States and its allies. Tonight, I call on all civilized nations to join us in seeking to end the slaughter and bloodshed in Syria. Well, joining us now via the telephone from Washington, D.C., is Malcolm Nance. He's counterterrorism and intelligence advisor and the author of the book, Defeating ISIS. Mr. Nance, welcome. Good to have you with us. The president said he had to do this. He was driven to act because of that heinous gas attack. He certainly did act, but was he right? Well, in this instance, you could say that he was right. But the question is, what were the reasons that he actually carried out the attack? Was it in, was it in the emotional impulse of seeing the victims uh, of the Syrian chemical attack? Uh, and that was very emotional. I mean, it's very hard to see uh, people almost real time on like Periscope or a live chat uh, choking to death and, and, and babies uh, choking to death. However, the policy needs to go a little further because it's Russia uh, and the Syrian Air Force uh, during the first two months of the administration killed hundreds and hundreds of civilians by targeting hospitals specifically uh, to, to kill as many civilians as possible and destroy their infrastructure and their ability to resist uh, anything that uh, of their ability to resist uh, Syrian ground force incursions. So by doing this, Donald Trump has jumped in both feet against, a, uh, a, a, against a, an opponent that he wanted to be an ally, that was Russia, uh, right in the middle of Russia's bio patch that, uh, that, where they support Syrian President al-Assad. Now, more interestingly is the fact that Iran is the chief beneficiary of this. This will solidify Iran's uh, stance inside of Syria. They have thousands and thousands of troops who are confronting Syrian rebels who could just as easily start rocketing U.S. forces in northern Syria. Hmm. There is a lot of risk involved here. You brought up a couple of the things. If Syria were to fall, wouldn't that leave it wide open for ISIS to move into that country as well? Well, it could. And, you know, bringing ISIS into the equation right now, they're, they're relatively surrounded and the, the, the you know from the north by the Syrian Kurds from the northeast by US backed rebels and US forces that well very limited US forces mainly special forces and then to the south and southeast I mean to the south by the Syrian army itself so that force the Syrian government is not going to fall anytime soon uh, no matter what we do and by striking one airbase Shirat airbase which was the point of origin for that attack. U.S. intelligence is very good at things like this, which is destroying an air base. But destroying a ground force of, you know, 100, 200,000 men who could immediately turn into insurgents uh, and carry out an insurgency the way we had in Iraq for 10 or 20 years, that would be the, uh, that would be the result of any further uh, operations that, that would bring you... But, but, but this is a targeted strike, if I can just break in for a second. Then right. he seems to be sending a message here. Can you at least say for sure this morning, message received? Well, the, the question is, yes, he can say the message is received. And to tell you the truth, he carried out the precise strike that President Barack Obama was considering in 2013. And it appears that uh, this may have been done to just show his personal resolve However, Syrian President Bashir al-Assad sent him a test, and that test was launching chemical weapons that were illicitly kept after they were supposedly destroyed on that city to see, uh, you know, not just to kill 70, 78 civilians, 
but to really test uh, one person in the world to see how he would behave. And if uh, and, and I guess and I guess now he knows, right. correct? Yes. Well, yeah, yeah. Now he knows. That's Malcolm Nance. He's a counterterrorism intelligence advisor and author. We're going to keep him on the line, but I want to turn to our panel here in the studio as well. We are joined by uh, Mary C. Curtis. She's a columnist for Roll Call and a senior facilitator with the Op Ed Project. Rashad Robinson's executive director for Color of Change, and Allison McGevna is on and video with us from New York. She's editorial director of Hello Beautiful Com. And Jamira Burley is a human rights activist. I want to turn to all of you and point out that the inevitable comparison is going to be drawn between this strike and 2013 when Barack Obama drew the red line in the sand and then backed away after a gas attack that killed far more people than the 86 we saw just uh, a couple of days ago. Well, basically, he's blaming uh, Obama, what he says, his inaction, although at the time, uh, President Trump, then Donald Trump, basically said, don't go in. You've realized that it's uh, very different when you're campaigning and when you're not president than when you have to make those decisions. It does seem that he does react very much to what happens at the moment. And the big question is going to be, what comes next? Yeah, that is the big question. I mean, I think he's also reacting to the media narrative surrounding yeah. Russia and his relationship to Putin and having to um, make a really clear statement about that relationship. I think that uh, the saber rattling, the, the sort of playing um, with uh, bombs and uh, military weaponry um, is how we get into wars. Mm. And um, this sort of relationship um, between Putin and Trump, the sort of um, machismo that's going back and yeah. forth. Uh, has um, uh, real consequences. But it could have had real consequences if you do nothing, couldn't it? It could have real consequences, and that's why the question is, it to some, well, many people are questioning why, did, what was the purpose of this action? Was it because you really feel sorry for what's happening in Syria, or are you doing this for political gain? My concern, as, as Rashad mentioned, is um, he wanted to, to kind of draw a line in the sand between his relationship and Russia, but at the same time, he warned Russia before the attack. And so the question is, who is he really trying to benefit, and who was he really sending a message to? You know, Alison McGovern, did uh, Trump need to do this to show that he's more than just bluster? Uh, no, if anything, I think this actually makes him look more unstable. I mean, this yeah. is a, a very, the thing about this is that this is a war that you cannot win. So you have to be very, very strategic in any actions you make. And this just makes him look like an unprepared hothead, which we already wow. knew. But, uh, you know, it's really, it's really scary to see, like, you know, it just seems like it was such a fast, quick decision. And uh, that is really concerning because this is, you have to be very strategic in Syria. All right, unprepared hothead. Head. Those are strong words. Malcolm Nance, I'll go back to you. Just how degraded now is Syria's ability to wage war from the air, if it's degraded at all? Uh, it's not degraded at all. Mm -hmm. uh, this strike uh, was, a, uh, was carried out on a secondary air base. It wasn't even one of their major air bases. Uh, they may have lost about 12 uh, to 14 aircraft. That's a, that's a drop in the bucket. And it, but it does degrade a little bit their sh air strike capability. But the Syrian Air Force was, has never, the entirety of this war, flown at maximum capacity. They, they seem to use airstrikes with great precision, uh, mainly for targeting civilians and in, in at various times where uh, the ground forces dig in. So, uh, no, this, this is not degraded serious capacity at all. You know, the Russians are saying they are furious about this and that this is seriously damaged relations. On the other hand, they were warned about it so that none of their troops would be in the way of these attacks. And from what I'm told, they do have weapons that are capable of at least disrupting cruise missile attacks, weapons they didn't use. Is this more nuanced than what the uh, Russian rhetoric would suggest? Well, it certainly appears that, uh, you know, the relationship between Trump and the Russians is one where they don't want to become adversaries. They don't want confrontation. Granted, they, they could have interdicted, but the cruise missile pro launch profile that we would have shot w would have been over uh, northern Lebanon and popping up over the mountains. The Russians wouldn't have had good capacity to intercept those missiles. That doesn't mean that they won't intercept our drones or take a shot at strike aircraft. But by warning the Russians, 
it makes you wonder just precisely what was the intent of the strike other than to show that we could destroy facilities. We're very good at that because, you know, there's been very little loss of life. I'm looking at real-time pictures this morning. And, uh, you know, if the intent was to limit the loss of life, then uh, the strike is sim uh, simply symbolic. You have to kill foreign personnel, uh, and that's where the real capacity to do harm against the civilians comes from. All right, thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate your time. Malcolm Nance, counterterrorism intelligence advisor, author of the book Defeating ISIS, a very emotional President Donald Trump came on television last night. But when emotions calm down and the initial reactions go by, we'll wait to see the impact of the attack on Syria. A peaceful protest turned deadly. 37-year-old black man was shot to kill by Baton Rouge police. His hands are in the air and you still get shot by the cops. Oh my God, please don't tell me he's dead. We're not gonna let hate define us. Race is a big part of this. If truly all lives matter, then all lives need to matter equally. What we require is action. What we require is accountability. We understand that black lives do matter. We will keep focus on this issue. News One Now, every weekday morning at seven on TV One.